Hey everyone, today we are looking at section 1-4, which is pairs of angles, all right? The first angle pair that we're gonna look at is adjacent angles. These are two angles that are side by side. They share a vertex and they also share a ray that makes their sides of the angle. So if we look at angles one and two, their vertices are both this point right here and they both share this side in common, but none of their interior points overlap, all right? If those two angles that are adjacent also happen to form a straight line, then these are called a linear pair. So a linear pair of angles, they're non-shared side. So that's talking about this side right here and this side right here. So these two sides make a straight line. They are opposite rays. So remember our opposite rays start in the same point and go in opposite directions, all right? So our linear pair of angles look like this. Now we have a linear pair theorem that says that if we have two angles that form a linear pair, then they'll be supplementary. So that means the measures of angles three and four are gonna add to 180 degrees, all right? If I have complementary angles, these are gonna be two angles that add to 90, so A and B are gonna to add to 90. Supplementary angles are two angles that add to 180 degrees, so A and C add to 180. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because this is previous knowledge, all right? So just make sure you remember complementary adds to 90, supplementary adds to 180 degrees. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and write this on your notes now. Okay, so let's take a look. We want to tell whether the angles are just adjacent or if they form a linear pair or if they're not adjacent, okay? I'm not going to worry about saying adjacent and form a linear pair because if they are linear pair, the definition is that they're adjacent. So we want to know are they adjacent, not adjacent, or a linear pair. Okay, so let's take a look. Our first pair of angles are gonna be angles one, which is right here, and angle two, which is right here. So I wanna know, first off, do they share a vertex? So they both meet right here. Both of the vertices of this angle are right here at part B. So yes, they share a vertex. The next question is, do they share a side? And I look here, they both share this side. So yes, they share a side. So they are adjacent, okay? But we also want to know if they're a linear pair as well. So we want to look at the sides that they don't share and see if they form a line. Well, this right here is not a straight line. So these are just adjacent angles. All right? The next ones that we're going to look at are angles two and four. So angle two is right here. Angle four is right here. So my first question is, do they share a vertex? Well, the vertex of angle two is right here. The vertex of angle four is down here. So no, they do not share a vertex, which means they cannot be adjacent or a linear pair. So these are just not adjacent. Okay, the next set we're gonna look at are angles one and three. So angle one is right here, and then angle three is right here. So my first question is, do they share a vertex? So yes, right here, they both share this vertex at point B. Next question is, do they share a side? Which, yes, right here, they share a side, okay? Then my third question is, do the, is the sides that they don't share, okay, are they a straight line? So when I look at the sides that angles one and three don't share, yes, they are a straight line. So angles one and three are a linear pair, okay? If you have any questions about that, again, please go ahead and write that down on your notes now. Next thing we're gonna look at, again, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on complementary and supplementary angles, but the next thing that we're gonna look at is I wanna find the complement of angle M. Well, remember, complementary angles add to 90 degrees, okay? Um, so I'm gonna say, if we look up here, we can find the measure of the angle by just subtracting it from 90, 
or for supplementary, we can subtract it from 180. So I'm just going to do 90 minus 20, oh, 26.8. Almost wrote that backwards. 26.8. Okay. And when I do that, I am going to get 63.2 degrees. So the complement of angle M is going to measure 63.2 degrees. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing over here, except for supplementary angles are angles that add to 180 degrees. So instead of doing 90 minus the angle measure, I'm going to do 180 minus my angle measure. But this time my angle measure is an expression. It is 2y plus 20. So first things first, I need to distribute this negative. So I'm going to do 180 minus 2y minus 20. I'm going to combine my like terms. So 180 minus 20 is 160. So it's 160 minus 2y. Now, because my angle measure is an expression, my supplement will also be an expression. So this is our answer. All right. Any questions about that? Write those down. The biggest thing is to remember that complementary add to 90, supplementary add to 180. All right. Any questions, then write it down on your notes. Okay, this is the part of complementary supplementary that we are going to spend a little more time focusing on because this is taking um, the expressions of it and bringing it into an equation. All right, so this is the part that people tend to have a challenge with. So I have an angle measures three degrees less than twice the measure of its complement. So first things first, if we have complementary, we know I'm going to have two angles that add to 90. Okay. So if I just call the angles angle A and the complement will be angle B. Okay. I'm going to know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is going to add to 90 degrees, all right? Those two angles have to add together to be 90. Remember, if we were looking at a supplement, that that would be 180. All right, now, angle A is related to just the measure of angle B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call angle B X. Now, angle A is gonna be three degrees less then twice the complement. So if I do twice the complement, that is going to be 2x. And if it's 3 degrees less than twice the complement, it's going to be 2x minus 3. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, 2 times or 3 degrees less than twice the complement. And this is my complement. So I can simplify this to 2x minus 3 plus x equals 90. Okay, combine my like terms, 2x plus x is 3x, minus 3 equals 90. I am going to add 3 to both sides, and I'm going to get that 3x is equal to 93. And when I divide both sides by 3, I'm going to get that x is 31 degrees. Okay, so that means that the measure of angle B, which is the complement, is 31 degrees. That's what we're looking for is the measure of that angle. Okay. If we were looking, if it said find the measure of the angle, then it, we would be doing um, 31 times 2 minus 3, which is going to give us 59 degrees. All right. So we don't need it in this case, but if we did, the measure of angle A would be 59 degrees. All right. If you have any questions about that, please go ahead and write that down now. The next type of angle that we're going to look at is vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed when basically you have two intersecting lines. Okay, we get the X. Vertical angles are going to share a vertex and they're going to be across from each other. Angle one and angle three are vertical angles. Angle two and angle four are vertical angles. They're across from each other. They are never adjacent. 
okay? Vertical angles are across from each other. They happen at the x's. We have a vertical angles theorem, which is going to say that vertical angles are always congruent. So not only are angles one and three vertical, but they are also congruent. Angles two and four here are vertical and congruent. All right, so if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write it down on the next slide. Okay, so our last example for today is we're going to use the information about vertical angles and about linear pairs that we've done. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna name one pair of vertical angles, and then I wanna find the value of x. So if I look, I have an x here and I have an x here, okay? So what I wanna notice is are these angles vertical angles, okay? I have the x and they are across from each other, okay? So they are vertical angles, they're congruent. So is this angle with this angle, okay? But I'm just gonna go ahead and name my x pair of angles. So I'm gonna say that angle G, D, E, and angle F, D, H are vertical angles. Okay, now I wanna find the measure or the value of X. So in order to find the value of X, because I know from that vertical angles theorem that they are congruent, I know that the measure of angle GDE is going to be equal to the measure of angle FDH. Again, anytime things are congruent, we're going to set their values equal to each other. So GDE is gonna be three X plus 12, and FDH is five X minus 10. All right, I'm gonna, subtract 3x from both sides, I'm gonna get 2x over here. I'm gonna add 10 to both sides, I'm gonna get 22 over here. From there, I'm gonna divide both sides by two and I'm gonna get that x is 11. All right. Next, I wanna find a linear pair and then I wanna find the value of y, okay? So remember, a linear pair of angles are going to make a straight line, all right? They're gonna be adjacent, so they'll share a vertex, they'll share a side, and they'll make a straight line. So if I look at this angle right here, okay, I can pick either one next to it, and these will be linear pair of angles. So if I look at this angle here, and I look at, let's just use this angle here, okay? These two, they share a side, and their other two sides make a straight line. So they are a vertical pair of angles, okay? So I'm just gonna name those two. So it is angle E, D, F, and angle F, D, H, are a linear pair. Okay, now I wanna find the value of y. Well, remember from our very first slide that a linear pair of angles are also supplementary. So I know that the measure of angle EDF plus the measure of angle FDH is gonna equal 180 degrees. So EDF is gonna be 12Y plus 15. FDH is 5X minus 10. Well, we know what the value of X is. The value of X is 11. So I'm gonna set 12Y plus 15 equal, or excuse me, plus five times 11 minus 10 equals 180. So when I combine like terms, I'm gonna get 12Y plus 60 equals 180. Subtract 60 from both sides, I get 12y equals, oops, 120. So when I divide both sides, I get y is equal to 10. 
If you have any questions, write those down, and I hope you guys have a great day.